Hello, my name is Teresa Miller and I'm the Director of Technology Advocacy here at Cohesity. And today we're going to take a closer look at Smart Files and Cohesity Fort Knox. So the first thing we are taking a look at here is our global Helios dashboard where you can get a bird's eye view into everything going on within your Cohesity deployment, including uh, taking a look at our scope selector. So here you can see that in my environment, I have multiple managed services by Cohesity, our Data Protect uh, as a service, Site Continuity, Fort Knox, which will be our focus today, including all of the clusters that I have deployed in my environment. So as I mentioned, we're going to go ahead and take a closer look at how to leverage Fort Knox for smart files. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and actually head over to one of my clusters. So when I connect to my cluster, I'm going to go ahead and click on smart files and choose views. What we're doing here is just a level set. I'm showing you that I have a view that has data and that we are going to be uh, using for our demo today. The other piece that I want to show you here over on this particular node is that in data protection, I have some policies set up and more specifically, I have this bronze policy in place where I have Cloud Vault already set up. Now, for those of you just getting started with Cohesity Fort Knox, you'll have to set up a Cloud Vault first, and then you'll create your policy. I'll show you where to do the Cloud Vault creation in just a second, but I am going to go ahead here and just kind of show exactly um, how this would work. Um, essentially, similar to the other policies that you're creating within Cohesity, you would go ahead and name your policy and you can add your Cloud Vault. I'm going to go ahead and click Cancel and um, we're going to head over to the next setup element. So protection jobs are also required um, for vaulting to occur. So what I have here is a protection job on the multi-protocol view that I just showed you with vaulting in place. So if I go ahead and edit this job, what I can see is I have that, that view. I have a regular backup. I have a cloud vault and that's all based on this bronze policy. So you could obviously change it or create your own policy. And it's the same additional settings that you are accustomed to. I'm going to go ahead and click cancel. Now let's head over to Fort Knox. So in Fort Knox, there's um, the dashboard. In the dashboard, you can see here at a glance what's going on with your vaulting. We can see everything is working successfully here today. As mentioned, I told you that we would take a look at where the cloud vaults are set up. So in the bronze policy we were working with today, there was a vault uh, to a region. And so the regions are set up here in cloud vault configuration. And here I have two uh, different regions set up but you could add any region you needed. So for example, if you clicked create vault, like I just did, you can come out and choose any region we have available across the globe from Singapore to Sydney, London, Paris, etc. Now for this demo, I'm going to go ahead and click cancel. Um, and let's talk a little bit more about one more piece. It's the quorum. So in terms of quorum, we have groups set up. Quorum groups can be, if I edit this, um, set up based upon operation. So think of it as a form of RBAC where I can put in place exactly where I want approval by members of the appropriate team. So for today, my quorum group focuses on data protection and I have um, three approvers in my group. You can't have uh, less than two. You can have more than three. 
Um, but the important piece is that from an approval perspective, if I were to try to change this to one, it says you must have between two and three, and that's based on the number of approvers you have. I'm going to go ahead and cancel. So now let's focus on smart files again. Let's go ahead and initiate a recovery. I'm going to go ahead and click recover cohesity view. We're going to go ahead and type in the name of the view. Search and index went ahead and filled that in for me. I'm going to go ahead and choose that view. Now in my case, I'm going to go ahead and redirect this recovery because I want to take a closer look at the data before I would replace anything on my production environment. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to rename this to to TMM. The other thing I need to do is choose my restore point. So I need to go back uh, a day and I need to uh, go back to a point in time um, in which I have a vault copy. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the vault copy and I'm going to go ahead and click save. So beyond that, I then need to click continue and my request has now been submitted for quorum approval. So remember with Fort Knox, all recoveries will need to be approved. Now I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to click Fort Knox. I'm going to choose security. I'm going to go to quorum and here is my pending request in which I'm going to approve. Okay. So now let's go ahead and do the approval with the other account that is at play. So here I have another account I'm logged in as I'm going to head over to security. I'm going to go to quorum and I'm going to go ahead and initiate that approval as well. So now we need to monitor the recovery. So that would be done under cloud vault under recoveries. And it usually takes uh, a couple minutes for it to appear here. So we'll check back in, in just a couple moments. So we now have a recovery initiated and when that recovery is complete, I would head back over to my cluster and I would have access to the recovered data right within Cohesity. Mm -hmm.